onomasiology to name, which in turn is from nu omicron mu alpha name, is a branch of linguistics concerned with the question, how do you express x? Quote, it is in fact most commonly understood as a branch of lexicology, the study of words. Onomasiology, as a part of lexicology, starts from a concept which is taken to be prior and asks for its names. The opposite approach is known as somasiology. Here one starts with a word and asks what it means, or what concepts the word refers to. Thus, an onomasiological question is e. G. What are the names for long, narrow pieces of potato that have been deep-fried? While a semasiological question is E. G. What is the meaning of the term chips? Quote dot. On a masiology can be carried out synchronically or diachronically. I. E. Historically, the majority of linguists seem to link on a automatically to diachronic questions. I. E. Questions on how and why things change their names. Therefore, the following sections refer predominantly to onomasiology in its diachronic perspective. Definition. Onomasiology was initiated in the late 19th century, but it didn't receive its name until 1902, when the Austrian linguist Adolf Zahner published his study on the body part terminology in Romance languages. And it was in Romance linguistics that the most important onomasiological work were written. Early linguists were basically interested in the etymology of the various expressions for a concept which was mostly a clearly defined, unchangeable concrete object or action. Later the Austrian linguists Rudolf Meringer and Hugo Schuchart started the Water und Sacken movement, which emphasized that every study of a word needed to include the study of the object it denotes. It was also Shushart who underlined that the etymologist on a masiologist when tracing back the history of a word needs to respect both the dame fanatic and the dame same anti. Another branch that developed from onomasiology and, at the same time, enriched it in turn was linguistic geography, since it provided onomasiologists with valuable linguistic atlases. The first ones are Sprach Atlas des Deutschen Reichers of Georg Wenker and Ferdinand Reed, published beginning in 1888, the ALF by Jules Gillieron, the AIS by Carl Jaberg and Jacob Judd, the DSA by Ferdinand Reed A.L. These atlases include maps that show the corresponding names for a concept in different regions as they were gathered in interviews with dialect speakers by means of a questionnaire. Concerning English linguistics, onomasiology as well as linguistic geography has been playing only a minor role. In 1931 the German linguist Jost Trier introduced a new method in his book Der Deutsche Wortschat im Sinnbezug des Verstands which is known as the lexical field theory. According to Trier, lexical changes must always be seen, apart from the traditional aspects, in connection with the changes within a given word field. After World War II few studies on onomasiological theory have been carried out, but onomasiology has recently seen new light with the works of Dirk Gira as Andreas Blank Peter Koch and the periodical Onomasiology Online, which is published at the Catholic Universität Eichstatt Ingolstadt by Wikim Grzegor, Alfred Bamsberger and Marian Skoner. A recent representative of synchronic onomasiology is Pavel Steckauer. Instruments for the historical onomasiologist. The most important instruments for the historical onomasiologist are the linguistic atlas, the etymological dictionary, the dialect dictionary, thesauri, 
diachronic text corpora, lexical change, explanations when a speaker has to name something, they first try to categorize it, if the speaker can classify the referent as member of a familiar concept, they will carry out some sort of cognitive linguistic cost-benefit analysis, what should I say to get what I want, based on this analysis, the speaker can then either fall back on an already existing word or decide to coin a new designation. These processes are sometimes more conscious, sometimes less conscious. The coinage of a new designation can be incited by various forces. Difficulties in classifying the thing to be named or attributing the right word to the thing to be named, thus confusing designations. Fuzzy difference between superordinate and subordinate term due to the monopoly of the prototypical member of a category in the real world. Everyday contact situations. Institutionalized and non-institutionalized linguistic pre- and prescriptivism, flattery, insult, disguising things, taboo, avoidance of words that are phonetically similar or identical to negatively associated words, abolition of forms that can be ambiguous in many contexts, wordplay, puns, excessive length of words, morphological misinterpretation. Delation of irregularity, desire for plastic, illustrative, telling names for a thing, natural prominence of a concept, cultural induced prominence of a concept, changes in the world, changes in the categorization of the world, prestige, fashion, the following alleged motives found in many works have been claimed to be invalid by Grzega. Decrease in salience, reading errors, laziness, excessive phonetic shortness, difficult sound combinations, unclear stress patterns, cacophony, processes in the case of intentional, conscious innovation, speakers have to pass several levels of a word finding a name giving process, analysis of the specific features of the concept, onomasiological level, the onomatological level, the level of feature analysis can be spared if the speaker simply borrows a word from a foreign language or variety, it is also spared if the speaker simply takes the word as he originally fell back to and just shortens it, if the speaker does not shorten an already existing word for the concept, but coins a new one as he can select from several types of processes, these coinages may be based on a model from the speaker's own idiom, on a model from a foreign an idiom, or, in the case of root creations, on no model at all. In sum, we get the following catalogue of formal processes of word coining, adoption of either, an already existing word of speaker's own language or a word from a foreign language, conversion, composition, ellipsis, clipping, acronyms, blendings, bag derivation, reduplication, morphological alteration tautological compounds, word playing, puns, stress alteration, graphic alteration, phraseologism, root creation. The name giving process is completed with the actual phonetic realization on the morphonological level. In order to create a new word, the speaker first selects one or two physically and psychologically salient aspects. The search for the motivations is based on one or several cognitive associative relations. These relations are, contiguity relations, similarity relations, partiality relations, contrast relations. These relations can be seen between forms, between concepts and between form and concept. A complete catalogue reads the following associative relations, identity, figurative I, E, individually felt, similarity of the concepts, contiguity of concepts partiality of concepts, contrast of concepts, literal or figurative similarity between the forms of a sign and the concept, strong relation between contents of signs and literal similarity of concepts, strong relation between contents of signs and contrast of concepts, strong relation between contents of signs and literal similarity of concepts. Similarity of the forms of signs, contiguity of the forms of signs.
literal i.e., objectively visible, similarity and contiguity of concepts, literal similarity of reference and strong relation between contents of signs. Multiple associations. The concrete associations can or cannot be incited by a model which may be of speaker's own idiom or a foreign idiom. 